This story is called My Fiance Tried to Kill Me in Front of Our Infant Daughter by George. <sighs> okay. Sorry if this is hard to read and I don't just mean because it's dark. It would be an even longer story as to why I don't type well and it's not relevant to the story. For many reasons, I didn't have a good start in life. My father killed himself when I was six years old, and my middle brother would die a memer six years later in a deer-related car accident. I have an older brother who wasn't around and didn't live with us, so we weren't that close. Much of my life was spent raised by my mother, which isn't too bad. My mother did her best, and I, I was kind of a little shit when I was a kid anyways. But then weren't we all? Anyways. I had just graduated high school with the world before me. So many possibilities. And rather than doing the smart thing to take off a year and figure out what I wanted to do, I instead bounced back and forth between a job and college, never really getting anywhere. Part of the problem is that I have severe general anxiety that made doing either needed thing in adult life very difficult, and yes, this will be relevant to parts of the story. It was while being in between a job that the... Uh, it was while being in between either a job that the internet came to our home and I soon found this strange new world of chat rooms. Remember chat rooms? I had just discovered some generic chat room called Manson Chat, named for Marilyn Manson, yes, I was goth AF, and not Charles, when I met a girl, which would blossom into my first online relationship. But little did I know that she wasn't all that interested in me, but she left the computer to use the bathroom and one of her sisters took over typing, even going so far as to give out their phone number. So I called, and a very surprised Cassie answered the phone. It was only later I found that Cassie herself wasn't that interested in me. In fact, Cassie at the time was a lesbian. Dot dot dot. Or so I thought. <laughs> uh, or so I thought she was one, and was already in a toxic IRL relationship with another woman. But somehow we got to talking and seemed to like each other and soon a long distance relationship uh, because we started to write to each other through the mail. Remember the mail as the main way we texted? I sent her drawings as I am an artist and she loved them and would send me letters of love back. Over time we grew very close and then she told me of her relationship with this woman. I have long since forgotten the woman's name, but apparently the last straw was the other woman wanted to date a bunch of people, but wanted Cassie to be only with her and wanted us to break up. Cassie refused and that was the end of them leaving only us. Which is what I wanted all along. And before people shout, cock, I had no idea she was dating someone else while we were dating. That should have been a red flag, but I was young, dumb, and very full of cum. <laughs> so I shrugged it off because I loved this woman. We finally set about to meet IRL. Her mother was marrying for the umpteenth time, red flag number two, and so the wedding was the perfect time to bring me down to see her. I was in California at the time, and she was in New Mexico. So I flew down there, my first real trip alone to anywhere, and I was a virgin at the time. Oh, if only I could go back. I had severe anxiety all on the trip and I didn't know the trip would trigger it and my meds didn't work, only sleeping worked. This set her off big time into a massive fight when I got home. But there was more than that. On the trip, we ended up in a hot tub, me and her sisters and her. <laughs> well, Annie, the baby sister, started getting a little flirty, almost hands-on. I did my best to rebuff her advances and thought I did a good job. Well, then I get in trouble because Annie eventually runs to Cassie and is like, you need to control your man. Like what? But it didn't matter. 
after a lot of mutual masturbation behind the barn. <laughs> Yes, there was a <laughs> barn in this story. I finally lost my virginity to Cassie on the last night. I wish I hadn't. So I get home after a long flight back. This is in the pre-9-11 days when traveling was so much easier, but still a hassle only to find angry messages from her. Why didn't you tell you about your anxiety? She shouted. I had no idea it could get that bad. I thought if it did, I could use my meds and be fine, I answered back truthfully. She was not having it, somehow, having something happen to me that wasn't planned, and I couldn't have no would be an issue, was an issue, a big one, and it became part of our first breakup, which devastated me, as it would anyone who lost their virginity to someone. Eventually, we got back together. <laughs> Sorry, I saw a chat that said, How the fuck is this the depression? <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, if you saw the title, I'm sure we're getting there. Eventually, we got back together. Uh, though, she confessed to me that she wanted to break up with me after the trip, because at the time, she wasn't that into me. Red flag number three. But grew to love me and want me back. I'll spare you months of bullshit and accusations of cheating that would have ended any sane relationship dead. I never cheated, but because of her bitch uh, of a mom, and I'll be, and I'll back this up later on Cassie didn't trust men, so you can imagine why she went for the bearded clam so much. But eventually we came to live together, and oh boy, strap in, cause this will be messy as hell. I am at work when I get a call on the phone, and keep in mind I was working at Toys R Us at the time, so I had to go to the break room to take the call. It's Cassie, and she's now out on the streets. Why, you may ask? Well, you see, her brother hit her in the head with a 2x4, but it's okay, cause hit him back in the face with a skateboard. Her mother had had enough and threw Cassie out, so she was living with a friend but couldn't stay there long. This should be all the red flags in the world, all of them. But I convinced my parents to let her come stay with us because I didn't have a good enough paying job to live out on my own at the time, and they felt so sorry for her as I did. So our life together began. Now prior to this, she had never displayed acts of aggression, but the way she was thrown out of the house should have told me everything. One night, things got heated over something seriously trivial, and she hit me. Then again. Then kicked me, and so it started. She was physically abusive, and I was finding out firsthand what that felt like. And yes, audience, she was a chubby goth GF. You can all laugh amongst yourself, but under that fat was some muscle and no impulse control. She left to take a walk as I sat there, there dazed at what had happened. She came back later on and apologized and I forgave her, but inside my heart was already broken. I had done literally nothing and she hit me over it. Thus we entered into level 1 crazy. It only gets worse from there. Now in spite of her size, she could fuck and fuck good. Part of why we stayed together as long as we did, but it wasn't super easy. But this was our life. As the story normally goes, when it was good, it was really good, but it, when it was bad, it was worse. She'd abuse me, mentally and physically, then get homesick, where we'd fly her out to spend time with her mom. She'd then call me up at odd hours asking to come back, and that she was sorry and she loved me, and I fell for it almost every time. Later on, it started to get worse. We tried to get her help and even was paying to get her into college to get her life on track. It didn't work, and she even threw it in our faces. She was more or less beyond help, and that wasn't just her opinion, my opinion. Her psychologist eventually came to the same conclusions. But we honestly tried to help her, but one day she's going through some old boxes of mine, when, way down in a box covered in dust, she finds a box from an old GF that I had long since forgotten about. In said box were some nudes 
and some old love letters from said GF. But this was the first of many last straws. She punched me, and as I got up, she grabbed a kitchen knife and started to swipe at me with the intentions of stabbing and or possibly killing me. While she did cut my shirt in a few places, she eventually gave up and locked herself in the bathroom and attempted to kill herself. But eventually, she unlocked the door. All over a box of old nudes that I had long ago packed away and forgotten about, as this person was from long before Cassie and I had gotten together. But I didn't call the police. That time, even when she admitted it was a blind rage and attempted murder. Oh, but it gets worse. So by this time, I was worked at Kampusa. Cassie had had one of her freakouts and went back home. The co-worker situation was mostly women. Many of Hull had known I was being abused because my Cassie had done at work a few times. A co-worker had expressed that someone I kind of had eyes for but never said anything had expressed feelings for me and this co-worker wasn't fat as fuck either. <laughs> Quite the opposite and would be a very big upgrade to my current situation. That day, I had resolved that I was done with Cassie. The sun was shining, the birds seemed to be singing. I was out, uh, I was done, I would tell Cassie after work that day, and my life could change for the better. I was so, so happy. Then I get into the car, and my mother is there with her cell phone to her ear, and she hands the phone off to me. It's Cassie, dot, 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 and she's pregnant. God fucking damn it, I was out. I was so safe from what was to come. She wasn't my problem anymore. And then this shit happens. What the actual fuck? And that was all in caps. So obviously I had to abandon my plans because Cassie wanted to for sure keep the baby. Or so I thought, and I had to step up and be a man, be a father. So I decided I'd try to make this work for the sake of our kid. I didn't want to do the broken home thing and the courts would not have been kind on any of this. She and I got back together. Eventually, I lost my job at Compusa. Oh, Comp USA. I'm, I'm guessing this means Comp USA. He's just making it one word with no capitalization. I'm sorry. Comp USA and never saw that coworker ever again. I went back to college determined to get myself back on track to a career for our di uh, future child. But slowly my heart was dying. I would do all I could and give my all for this, but I was still so done with Cassie. So done with the abuse and attempts on my life. But it gets even worse. So she had the baby and it's honestly one of the greatest days of my life. My daughter was so precious, and my heart grew for her once I saw her. I knew I'd do anything for her once I saw her. I knew I'd do anything for her, even endure uh, and try to love her worthless cunt of a mother. The birth wasn't easy, though, and there was a chance we almost lost her, but I am grateful we didn't in spite of her mother. But another big issue that does hit some fathers is I shut down sexually after the birth of our child. I read that nearly half the men who have a child with a spouse will go through this, and it's not fully known why it happens and why it happens to who it does, but I wasn't even masturbating. I was just not there sexually. This is when things get almost to their darkest point. You take a sexually frustrated, Physically abusive woman who you yourself at not strong enough to resist and um dot 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 Yeah, she raped me under threat of violence And no, I don't mean the game dude idea of rape. I mean actual rape But it gets darker She got off me when she realized I really didn't want it and then as I went to sleep feeling horrible and violated, she wrote a note and stuck it in my stuff that I found years later where she details how she is watching me breathe and wondering very much what it would be like to make that stop. She wrote 
Yes, she wrote a note confessing how much she wanted to kill me after she raped me. And to make matters worse, she didn't even care what she did and tried to rationalize that I gave her a pity fuck and it's my fault for not wanting it. But believe it or not, uh, in time, time, I do have a police report behind this. It gets even worse. And so eventually, we get to a place of mutually break up, but we'll live together and try to make it work for our daughter. Even though, by this point, it was like being a single dad. I was the one doing feedings, I was the one changing diapers, and no, I didn't mind doing it, I'm not complaining, she's my daughter. I was the one getting two hours of sleep a night, caring for our child, day in, day out, from sun up till whenever. Well, I was back in chat rooms again, as these were still mostly a thing at this point. When I made the mistake of being factual in an email that I stupidly left open. I made someone else who was living with their ex... Or I met someone else who was living with their ex and made the mistake of saying that my situation was the same. I went to the bathroom thinking nothing of it. And when I came back, my ex was already reading the letter with a furious look on her face. By now, I had proposed. Under duress... Oh. By now, I had proposed under duress. I had... I might add... So she had rings I had gotten her as we were heading towards a bloody, loveless marriage that, spoiler alert, would have likely ended my life. She comes to me and throws the rings into my face and says we are done and then kicks me out of our bedroom that I would spend the rest of my life sleeping on the couch while she got our comfy room. I had two hours to clean out my shit and anything left would be thrown out in the trash. So thinking nothing of it, I threw out a bottle of Astroglide which we had purchased for our sexy times. My thinking was that we wouldn't need it anymore so why keep it around? I still wasn't really fucking her at this point, and it's, and it's so say nothing of the rape as well. Well, so I am watching Adult Swim, which was the one thing I got every Sunday night where I could escape from the hell my life had become. I thought, okay, I got my shit in boxes, am sleeping on a futon, but at least I could have this after all the stress of our toxic relationship further imploding. Cassie comes storming in, the last person I wanted to talk to, and she asks me, where is the Astro Glide? I told her calmly it didn't matter. She asked me again. I eventually said, well, it was for us, and there is no us anymore, so I threw it away. Wrong answer. She punched so hard I fell back into the futon before I knew what was going on. She was on top of me. My 90-pound frame under around 200-something pounds. And she had her hands around my throat. Our infant daughter was on the floor crying for mommy as she's choking me out, and I don't mean sexually. She's screaming about how she hates me. Our daughter is crying. I am struggling to get her to stop because I can't breathe, and just as things are going dark, my stepfather comes in and does a navy hold on her, eventually restraining her while my mother calls the police. The cops came and I saw uh, the cops came and saw I was full of marks all over my face and neck, my mother trying to calm our baby while I try to recover. The cops took her away and put her into a mental hospital on 72 hour hold. I didn't press charges uh, beyond assault, but I didn't take it much further than that. It was a dark time, but it still wasn't some of the darkest shit. No, that wouldn't be till the later years where we were long since not living anywhere near each other and the custody battle started. I sure as shit wasn't going to let my ex-bitch have our child and ruin them. This wasn't about child support payments or the courts. This was about my daughter needing me and I wasn't going to leave her to become like her mother. Oh, fuck no. I'll spare you the long version and just get to some of the darkest shit now. 
One day I am tired out from another day at work. I was in another state by then working at a car wash, which, which wasn't a job that I hated all that much. Fresh air, plenty to, plenty to keep, plenty to do to keep you occupied, and the asshole customers were few and far between. But we had no legal agreements to limit visitations or put restrictions uh, in place. My ex would just show up and ask for our daughter, and then we'd have to go pick her up because my ex didn't have the money to keep her around nor to return her. Enough was enough, so I started in with lawyers, and it got predictably ugly. Which bring us back to this one day. I am asleep. Our daughter was at daycare, and so I could rest up before my daughter was to come home. When my mother wakes me up, and it's the district attorney from California, my cunt of an ex tried to make a claim against me that... When we first fucked, she was underage, which was beyond not true. Thankfully, the DA backed off once he found out there was a custody dispute between us, but this bitch tried to get me thrown in jail and put on a fucking registry, all to win her cause by default. It didn't work, and thankfully, so cause once her parenting failed, as it later did in life, she would have had to turn to me to save our daughter, and I couldn't not, while on a fucking sex offender registry, not to mention the time in jail with people would think I rape children. But the day came for our preliminary trial, and out of nowhere, my ex's attorney comes to our attorney and whispers in their ear. They go out into the hall, and my attorney comes back not long before we were set to go before the judge to start all this, and they tell me she'd like to agree with everything we asked, which didn't include child, su child support because she didn't work with and nothing from nothing is still nothing. I wasn't that evil though, she was. But she'd agreed to sign over everything to me, giving primary care status, meaning our child stayed with me if she could have her in the hotel for the night. We... What? I don't like where this is going. <sighs> we agreed and she went before the judge to put it all on record. The judge even threatened that he'd send the state of Texas after her if she ran with our child. I love that judge so much. I got out with my life but deep, deep mental scars and my child had a much better chance in life than her mother ever would have given her. So to my ex, she continued failed relationship after failed relationship. Okay, I was afraid that she was going to do something to the daughter in the hotel, but it looks like that didn't happen. Good. <sighs> Eventually, when our daughter was eight, my ex was an abusive drunk. She didn't drink when we were together, and she crossed the line into abusing our child, who had autism in full swing by this point. Once we got my daughter back, my daughter was so broken from one summer that she wanted to kill herself. But rather than go after my ex legally, we cut off all contact with her and waited for her to file against us if she dared. But she couldn't afford it. We spent the money we would have on legal fees to get my daughter back to herself and not an eight-year-old who wanted to end her own life. My ex was all over... Uh, my ex overall was young when we had our daughter. We were both in our 20s, and she didn't want to be tied down. I skipped over a lot, but I later found out that her cunt of a mother was not only the one trying, uh, telling her to try to get pregnant so we'd have to stay together. But she also convinced my ex that because she just stated our baby for nine months, then it was only fair that I take care of the baby all alone for that same period. My ex ended up getting so fat, she could no longer walk on her own. <laughs> she had no one to love, and when her fat became so much that her heart needed a pacemaker, she refused it, went home, and downed a bottle of pills. She keeled over, falling out of her wheelchair, and died. I can't say I am not happy the bitch game-ended herself. My daughter even wants to find her grave to piss on it. Damn the laws. Yeah. 
I, I was not expecting the story to have a happy ending. <laughs> As to me, I didn't date for a long time after Cassie because I felt I was in no shape to pick a good woman to be my child's stepmom. I didn't trust myself to make good choices beyond the basic ones for my daughter's day to day. And while my daughter is now an adult, it's been a long road to get her back to a place of being kind and caring. Her mother left us both in a bad state for some time now. I still get nightmares about her and it's hard to forget her. I don't think I have ever grown to hate someone so much in my life, but as one final slap in the face to my parents talk about how she was victim too because of the abuse she grew up with and that I should forgive her for what she's done. Forgive her? I don't think there is such a thing after all that. We all tried to so hard to give her a better life and a better future, and she threw it in our faces. True, she was abused too, but is that really any excuse? Anyways, take care, Jimmy. Signed, George. Oof! You know, it's not often we get stories from boomers, and it it really shows that these, these older folk with long lives and long tales to tell, They've got their life experience grants them stories that are far more fascinating than oh, I'm a teenager and nobody wants to date me. Oh, fuck, George. Good for you, dude. Man, after all that, that you still you took care of that kid, you made sure that your child was not in the hands of uh, an abusive uh, fat ogre monster in a wheelchair. Oh, man. George, you're a hero to me. I wonder how old this guy is. So, I don't know. He's probably like in his 50s or 60s now if his daughter is an adult. <sighs> this story is going to the main channel, right? Uh, it could. It certainly could. You dropped your crown, king. <laughs> George, give us a Patreon. George is a true hero. Wow, we. That's rough. Um, I guess, I guess I'm glad that the bitch died, and I'm glad that it was due to, uh, her own stupidity. She got fat as fuck, refused to take the correct medication, and then dropped dead. Well deserved, I say. Well, well deserved. <laughs>